I talked to him. I, you know, have spoken to him a few times, whatever. But in terms of me having like an intimate relationship with Pete, with you know, men, I can name them all on one hand, and he ain't on the hand. The Mariah thing, uh, yeah, that's true. Those rumors are true, and I'm not gonna deny them. So, you, did you date him? No. Can I just clarify that I did not have a physical relationship with him? I did not have a, an intimate relationship. I've been with less men than I can, you know, than on one hand. In the late 1980s, a pop singer from Long Island, New York by the name of Mariah Carey began her career by recording demo tapes. Eventually, she handed her demo tape to the head of Columbia Records, Tommy Mottola. After that, he immediately signed her to Columbia Records. On June 5th, 1990, Mariah made her first public appearance at the 1990 NBA Finals when she sang America the Beautiful before the game. And a week later, on June 12th, 1990, she released her debut studio album, Mariah Carey. She began gaining some traction as her debut album eventually topped the Billboard 200 after her label spent a million dollars promoting the album and would eventually become the best-selling album in the United States in 1991. Mariah followed up with her second studio album, Emotions, on September 17th, 1991, selling 129,000 copies in the first week, debuting at number 4 on the Billboard 200 chart. Mariah continued dropping projects throughout the 90s, such as her third album, Music Box, and her Christmas album, Merry Christmas, on October 28th, 1994, which has her all-time classic song, All I Want for Christmas is You. After this, it was clear that Mariah Carey was one of the biggest stars in the music industry. During this time, a kid in Detroit named Marshall Mathers, who went under the stage name Eminem, spelt like the candy, would begin releasing music on the underground circuit. Eventually, in 1996, he signed to Jeff and Mark Bass's label FBT Productions and would drop his debut album Infinite on November 12th, 1996, which the album completely flopped. Eminem would then come up with his alter ego Slim Shady in 1997 when he dropped the Slim Shady EP. He attended the Rap Olympics on October 24th, 1997, where he would be discovered by an intern at Interscope Records, where he would give them a copy of the Slim Shady EP. This led to Eminem being signed to Aftermath as Dr. Dre heard the EP and loved it. And on February 23rd, 1999, Eminem dropped his debut studio album, The Slim Shady LP. After that, Eminem would blow up, becoming one of the biggest rappers in the game. But it got even crazier on May 22, 2000, when Eminem dropped his second studio album, The Marshall Mathers LP, which sold an insane 1.78 million copies within the first week, which is just ridiculous numbers. So it was clear that Eminem was on top of the music industry. And 2001 would be where Mariah Carey and Eminem hooked up. Mariah was getting ready to drop her next album, Charm Bracelet, so she reached out to Eminem to see if he wanted to help her out on the project. Now, a According to Eminem, during this time is when they would begin dating for six months before breaking up eventually. But according to Mariah Carey, they actually never dated and it was just a business relationship. So Eminem being Eminem had to mention their alleged relationship on his songs. So on May 26th, 2002, Eminem dropped his third studio album, The Eminem Show. And on two of the tracks, he mentions him and Mariah's alleged relationship on the tracks Superman and When the Music Stops. You trying to be my new wife? What you, Mariah? Fly through twice. What the f you take me for a joke? You s before I do that, I beg Mariah to take me back. After this is when this all became public and the world was shocked that Eminem and Mariah Carey dated. Mariah got wind of this, so on December 3rd, 2002, Mariah Carey dropped her ninth studio album, Charm Bracelet, and on the track, Clown, she responds to Eminem, saying that they never even touched each other and throws subliminal shots when she calls him a puppet show. Okay, so what was going on between you and Eminem, if anything? Nothing. Nothing. I've been, look, look, I talked to him. I, you know, have spoken to him a few times, whatever. But in terms of me having like an intimate relationship with, with, you know, men, I can name them all on one hand and he ain't on the hand. That same day of her album release, she would appear on the Oprah Winfrey show. And Oprah asked her about her past relationship with Eminem and if they actually dated or not. Mariah would respond saying that she didn't have a relationship with Eminem at all, and this would begin Mariah's denial tour, where she would completely deny ever even dating Eminem. The Mariah thing, uh, yeah, that's true. 
Those rumors are true, and I'm not going to deny them. So you, did you date him? No. Can I just clarify that I did not have a physical relationship with him? I did not have a, an intimate relationship. I've been with less men than I can, you know, than on one hand. So he's not one of those men. In 2003, Mariah Carey would continue dissing Eminem subliminally when she wore a blonde wig and a Detroit jersey during a performance of her diss to Eminem called Clown. Eminem got wind of this, so on November 12th, 2004, Eminem dropped his fourth studio album, Encore, and on the track Puke, he disses his ex-wife, Kim, and it's also believed that this song was also about Mariah Carey. In 2005 is where this beef would get crazy. Eminem was performing in New York City, and during his performance of his song Like That, he would change the lyrics to diss her. After that, the song stopped playing, and Eminem leaked what would be an alleged voicemail from Mariah Carey flirting with him, in which she would mock her on stage, and then puke into a toilet as the song Puke began playing, insinuating that Mariah Carey makes him sick. Mariah Carey, looks so scary, I don't want to see it. Just a year later, on December 4th, 2006, Shady Records dropped the compilation album The Re-Up, and on the track Jimmy Crack Corn, Eminem takes shots at Mariah Carey. After that, the beef would go quiet due to Eminem leaving music for a while due to his personal drug issues, so 50 Cent actually got involved on September 11th, 2007, when he dropped his third studio album, Curtis, and on the track, All of Me, he threw shots at Mariah Carey, denying dating Eminem. Come to get you heated, deny it like Mariah. In late 2007, Eminem would overdose on where he would nearly die, but would be revived after being rushed to the hospital, which saw Eminem miraculously surviving. After that, Eminem sold out to go to rehab in 2008, but it would be in April of that year that Mariah Carey would marry her husband, Nick Cannon. A year later, Eminem made his long-anticipated return to hip-hop when he dropped his fifth studio album, Relapse, on May 15th, 2009. Not only did Eminem return to making music, but he also returned to dissing Mariah Carey. The fifth track on Relapse is a track called Bagpipes from Baghdad, where Eminem would not only throw shots at Mariah Carey, but he also threw shots at her husband, Nick Cannon. Locked in Mariah's wine cellar, all I had for lunch was bread wine, more bread wine, and Captain Crunch. Mariah, what's ever happened to us? Why did we have to break up? All I asked for was a glass of punch. I can't imagine what's going through your mind after such a nasty breakup with that Latin hunk. Luis Miguel, Nick Cannon better back the fuck up. I'm not playing. I want her back, you punk. I mean, I really want you bad, you Nick, you had your fun. I've come to kick you in your sack of junk. I ain't playing no fucking more. Nick Cannon, you punk. I wish you luck with the fucking Nick Cannon would respond in a blog post saying, I thought we got past the days where white men could spew vulgar obscenities at our beautiful queens and get away with it. So, Miss Marshall, I'm going to make you wish you never spoke my name and regret the ungodly things you said about my wife. I don't know why no one has stood up to your bitch yet, but I guess it's going to take a corny, whack, rapping boy toy from Nickelodeon to set you straight. And trust, I'm going to be relentless. Even though I got a lot of other obligations and occupations, you are my new full-time job, homie. Say tomato, I say tomato. I'm Tommy Matola, Mariah, don't stop me, I'm on the road. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> But what do you think about all this stuff no, Eminem's no, no, saying? No, no, there's nothing. We're, okay. we're not talking about We're not talking, Eminem. Exactly. We're not talking mate. Let's be respectful. Let's be respectful. Take care, Mariah. Mariah. See ya. Bye bye. During this time, Mariah Carey was gearing up to drop her album, Members of an Imperfect Angel. So, just a month after Eminem dropped his album on June 16th, 2009, Mariah Carey dropped her song, Obsessed, which was the lead single to her new album. This song was a diss track in response to Eminem, and in the music video, there's an Eminem lookalike following Mariah around as she was insinuating that Eminem is an obsessed creep. All up in the blogs saying we met at the bar when I don't even know who you are, saying we up in your house, saying I'm up in your car, but are you in LA and I'm out at your mains, I'm up in the A, you so so lame. And no one here even mentions your name. It must be the it must be the 
Cause you be poppin', heard you get it poppin'. Why you so obsessed with me? Boy, I wanna know. Lying that you're in me. When everybody knows, it's clear that you're upset with me. Eminem got wind of this, so a month later, on July 30th, 2009, Eminem dropped the track called The Warning, which was a full-blown diss track on Mariah Carey and Nick Cannon. On this track, Eminem exposes everything him and Mariah allegedly did, and he also put the voicemail recordings in the track and other audios of her speaking in interviews. I'm obsessed now, oh gee, that's supposed to be me in the video with the goatee. Wow, Mariah didn't expect it to go out. Shut the f*** up before I put all them phone calls out. You made in my house when you was wildin' out. Before Nick, when you was on my d***, give you something to smile about. How many times you fly to my house, still trying to count. Better shut your lying mouth if you don't want Nick finding out. You probably think cause it's been so long. If I had something on you, I would've did it by now. Oh, on the contrary, Mary Poppins, I'm mixing a studio session down and sending it to master and to make it loud. Enough dirt on you to murder you. This is what the f*** I do. Mariah, it ever occurred to you that I still have pictures? However you prefer to do, and that goes for Nick too. F*** you think I'm scared of you? You're gonna ruin my career, you better get one. Damn, Slim, Mariah played you. Mariah who? Oh, did I say Nick? I meant a liar too. Like I've been going off on you all this time for no reason. Girl, you out your alcoholic mind. But I'm moving on with my Nick. Is that your way? Well, tell her to shut her mouth, then I'll leave her alone. If she don't, sick of the then I'ma just keep going. Damn. I see Marianne. Marianne's saying, cut the tape. Cut the tape. Knife. After this, Mariah stayed quiet, but her husband, on the other hand, wasn't going to let this slide, as he tweeted a series of cryptic tweets. But a year later, on September 12th, 2010, Nick Cannon dropped his response diss track on Eminem called I'm a Slick Rick, as he disses Eminem while rapping over the Teach Me How to Dougie beat. Yo, I'm a service clown now, word Nick, word. I don't know if I should hit him because he's slick. Excuse me, Eminem, why you lying on your Eminem would then do an interview with Vibe Magazine where he said he was done with the beef, saying, in quotes, I really don't want to talk about her anymore. I don't want to keep beating a dead horse. I'm not even going to comment about it. I'm done with that whole situation. I said what I had to say. I'm done. After that, it would seem that this beef was over and done with, but that wasn't the case, as now it was about to become Eminem versus Nick Cannon. Right. Are you able to remove yourself at all? Just like, ah, Eminem's being Eminem. I would have. This is the thing. Like, when I heard the, because it all started from the, was the bombs over Baghdad. Person. Yeah. Yeah. And he said, like. Hiding in Mariah's wine cellar. He's saying all kinds of All crazy. of that stuff. Like, what, it was a line where he crossed it. And I just, and as a fan, I was like, I let everybody, y'all, I'm a huge Eminem fan, all of that stuff. But why wouldn't you say, I, I, I wish you luck with the four and all of that stuff? And I was like, no, nah, too, too far. Why you got, like. If you just saying, yo, I had a, like I had a bunch of chicks back in the day too. I'll be like, yo, you know, we, Nick, we know you have. Like you, but then <laughs> somebody's wife, exactly. Somebody's wife now. You I would have. never talk like there's chicks that are married to dudes now. I wouldn't, I wouldn't throw it out there like that. But then this is the thing, he lied about it. Like if it really happened, but that's did, what that's what I thought was the sucker shit about it. But did nothing happen? They they hung out. This is what I know. Okay. And this is what if you even listen to his lyrics, it sound like he's being honest but trying to put extras on it right right and he was like he talked about yo we all know that they kicked it and they hung out and all of that stuff fast forward on july 6 2016 nick cannon tweeted that he would love eminem to be on his show wild and out to which eminem didn't respond why why would he respond like right. but i don't think he was used to people coming back at him i think nah. if, if any i was probably the only person in hip-hop that was like oh you talking I can talk shit too. Right, right, right. And then he was like, why did I even open that can? I think one of his lines was like, man, I had no idea Nick Cannon was going wild out. <laughs> Later that year, on November 2nd, 2016, Nick Cannon and Mariah Carey would officially be divorced as their marriage was over. Fast forward three years later to September 2019, Nick Cannon appeared on T.I.'s podcast where he would open up about his longtime beef with Eminem. It got, you know, he, he said my name. I'm like, look, I know I ain't going to be. I said that. I know I'm not going to be out, able to out-rap you, but I will whoop your ass. Ooh. <laughs> and those were the exact words Ooh. at the time. After that, Eminem got wind of this interview. So on December 6th, 2019, Fat Joe and Dre dropped their collab album, Family Ties. Eminem features on the track, Lord Above. And on his verse, he sent shots at Nick Cannon and Mariah, saying that she had Nick whipped and calls Mariah Carey a nut job. I know me and Mariah didn't end on a high note, 
but that other dude's whipped. That he got him neutered. Try to tell him this chick's a nut job before he got his jewels clipped. Almost got my caboose kicked. Ooh, quit. You not gonna do sh I let her chop my balls off too before I lost to you, Nick. Nick Cannon got wind of this, so he posted on Instagram when he congratulated Fat Joe on the album and said, Star studded. He even did some charity work and dug at Eminem out his grave. I mean, cave. LOL, flam, blam, blam, Nick Cannon. Bring your ass to at MTV while and out to battle like a real legend, Grandpa Marshall. Now, at this point, Eminem probably felt that Nick was only interested in speaking to him to get him on wild and out because Nick and everyone else knows that Eminem equals ratings. After this, Nick Cannon responded with two diss tracks on Eminem. One was released on December 9th, 2019 called The Invitation, where Nick started the song with an alleged Suge Knight clip of him calling Eminem a bitch, and also references Eminem's ex-wife Kim and his daughter Haley. Eminem would respond with two tweets that day saying, You mad bro? Stop lying on my dick. I never even had a chauffeur, you bougie fuck. I demand an apology, Nicholas. You've made my gardener so jealous. The next diss track was released the next day called pray for him. After not getting a response out of Eminem just a little over a week later, on December 19th, Nick Cannon completed the trilogy when he dropped yet another diss track on Eminem called The Invitation Cancelled. This time, Nick actually sampled a song Eminem made when he was 15 called Foolish Pride, which was a diss towards his black ex-girlfriend at the time, so Nick tried to use this against him. What is the update right now with the whole Eminem diss track thing and all that? Yeah. Like, is it dead or is it still I, alive? Or? I don't know. I, I feel like at this point, you know, we had a lot of fun with it during the last season of Wild and Out. And when we get back to it, I know we probably, you know, the, the jokes ain't never going to stop. Mm -hmm. But I think I was like, I'm going to match your energy wherever you at with it. I didn't start it. He came at me. <laughs> wow. I just swing heavy. I, I, he you probably know? thought you were going to stay quiet, though. I and think. that's the thing. And everybody's like, oh, you better not say nothing. But why not? Ain't nobody scared of him. <laughs> so <laughs> he's Eminem. Yeah, with 50, ain't nobody scared of 50 either. Like, we just start like, let's go. So, you know, I match energy. So, I mean, however they want to see it but i think i think it, it might have got a little too too intense for them so uh <laughs> well hey, he's still welcome on the show and everyone get there i would you know 50 has been on wild and out before he right? hasn't that's the thing we what keep the? telling him to pull was. up he's Man. king of the jokes king of being petty he's perfect right for it. he'd be perfect for <laughs> it yeah he need to pull up he probably he, worried about what you're going to say to him. Yeah, these rappers are sensitive and tight. They are super <laughs> insane. You know, we're going to talk about them teeth. We're going to talk about his fluctuating weight. We're going to talk about all of that. After that, nothing else happened between either of them. And it seems as if Eminem wasn't lying when he said he was done with the beef back in 2010. But I guess Nick Cannon just wanted to keep taking jabs at him because he wanted him on Wild and Out. Before the end of this video, I want to give a special shout out to all my patrons, Wavy Prince, 100 LaFlair, Jody Bird, Sherrod Swafford, Hakeem Olajuwon, and Adam Miles. I appreciate all y'all for the support. And if you guys are wondering where you can view the uncut and uncensored version of this video, make sure you guys check out my Patreon. The link will be in the description. I appreciate all y'all for the support. Thanks for watching.